It says in the King James Bible, neither give place to the devil. Everybody say out loud, give no place to the devil. How much place? No. To who? The devil. Mr. D, evil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no. Can we read loud verse 29? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Oh, whoa. How much corrupt communication must come out of them? Okay. Give no place to the devil. So, let no corrupt Communication. Do what? Proceed. Oh, proceed. Where? Oh. God is so strict in His grace. He loves us so much that He gives us simple directions that we can have a high place life where the devil have no place. In Joshua 1 verse 8, he says, Let the word not depart from your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night till you observe all that is therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous. You shall do wisely and you shall handle with good success. Okay? Not even the word is supposed to come hasty out of your mouth. Now, if that is true, how much more do we need to pay attention to let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth? But just a verse back, it says, give no place to who? The devil. So what do I do if I have corrupt communication? First Corinthians 15. Listen to verse 33. Be not deceived. Say, I will definitely not be deceived. I'm not interested in being deceived. Do you like it when somebody deceives you? Now it says, you must not be deceived. Evil communication. Corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness. And sin not. Sin is from the devil, we know. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So this, let no corrupt communication. Now in 1 Corinthians 15 says, Do not be deceived. Evil communications corrupt. Shout it. Good manners. Okay. Maybe this is why people never learn manners. You tell them from the day they... Say askis. Say sorry. Say hello. Say thank you. Say forgive me. Say sorry. There's people that never say that. Because they just can't have good manners. Because in their life somewhere, there's communications that sounds evil that corrupt their good manners. So I want to say, uh, excuse me, but before I say that the person is already passed and, you know, say, oh, yeah, that person just haven't got manners. So somewhere place was given to the devil that robs us of our good manners. Say, so I want to be mannered. Come on, Paul says, let your friendliness, let your kindness be shown to all. So no matter who it is. Hi. How's it? I mean, they pass you and say, who's that? Now listen to what he says in this context. In this context of 1 Corinthians 15. Okay? Awake. Wow. Yeah. To what? 
unto righteousness. Okay. What does he mean? Now, the whole context is communications. But twice he says, corrupt or evil communications. How do you communicate? Let it not proceed out of your mouth. What does he mean when he say, I must awake unto righteousness? Now, I must understand the spirit of the word to know exactly what he is pointing to. So, Romans chapter 10 verse 4 says, the Christ is the end of the law to everyone that believe. Verse 5, for the righteousness which is of faith, Moses describes it in this way, that the man that does it shall live by by it. But the righteous shall live by faith. For the righteousness which is of faith speaks. Yeah. Come on, a big amen. amen. Romans chapter 10 verse 6. The righteousness which is that is of faith. What does it do? Speaks. speaks. Hallelujah. Okay, so faith speaks, but so does corruption. That takes us to a scripture that we know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Because we believe, we speak. As it is written, we have believed, therefore we have spoken. So faith speaks. If we believe, we will speak. What will we speak? The next verses in, in 2 Corinthians 4 is so very important. He says, if I look at the things that are seen, it's temporal and it's going to sink me. But if I look at the things that are unseen, they are eternal. And if I don't look at the seen, but at the unseen and speak that, it is working for me an ever-increasing weight of glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The next verse starts, says, Seeing then if this earthly tabernacle is broken down, we have a home in heaven. So the next minute immediately talks about this body that will be changed into the very image of the Christ. So I mustn't look at the scene. I mustn't say what circumstances say. I will not speak corrupt and evil communications. Why? I don't want to give place to the devil. Say loud. I will not give place to the devil. So I will not have corrupt communication. I will not have evil communication. I will live the righteous life. And the righteousness which is of faith speaks. And the righteous shall live by faith. That means if I live by faith, I must speak the right stuff. God's word. God's holy word. Right. So uh, let's back, go back to Ephesians 4. I mean this... This speaking thing with faith, and it, it, it is such an important thing. Okay, so the main faith scripture being used the last 25 or so years was Mark eleven twenty two. Have faith in God. For I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He shall have whatsoever he saith. But it goes on to say, if I don't doubt in my heart. And then he says three times, what I say, what I say, what I say. And one time he says, believe. So if I believe, my saying has got to exalt my mind. So with my heart and my mind, I believe. My mind has got to confirm that in the spirit world so that I make sure I give no place to the devil, that I make sure there will be no corrupt communication. So if I get a word of faith, I say, with the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. With the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. With the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Try and say it three times so that I will not be tempted to say, I feel sick. Come on, Joel 3 verse 10. Let the weak say, I am strong. Right, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication, did you get something so long? Out of your mouth. But that which is good. 
to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. I was just asking this question to myself, to God. Why is it that we get books of motivational speakers that stirs you? We listen to CDs by motivational speakers. Maybe you don't, but people out there do. Okay, they have big conferences. Many of them are New Age and Hindus and Buddhists. Many of them are Buddhists. Many of them are Hindus. They are gurus coming there somewhere from the east. But the funny thing is, they use the Bible. 75% of their quotations comes out of the Bible. And people leave edified. They leave so high. They challenge to go and get their businesses right. I said, God, why do they leave those places so high? And people leave some churches so low. God says, because the only thing they do in those conferences is speaking edification, uplifting, motivation, inspiration. They will not say a negative thing about people, about people in the house, about people outside there, about other people, about other speakers. They will just speak stuff that will make the people know they are great, they are awesome, they are wonderful. Really people, I've just listened to a set of six CDs again. I say, Lord, if I can get that man to come preach in our church. And when he preached, I want to say to him, would you just leave Buddha and and Rama and Hara and would you just leave those words out for a while? And not one preacher will know he's not a born again preacher. Yeah. Well, I'm not ugly. If you want to send me an email, send me an email. I'll even answer it. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is they take these scriptures that says whenever you speak, that must not be corrupt community. They use this scripture. They must no corrupt. They use this scripture. They new age. They smoke pot. They drink stuff that meddle up your brain. But when they speak, they say, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. But when you speak, it must be words of edification. It must bring grace to your hearers. Verse 30. Listen how, listen how hard ta he takes it. He says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you be ye therefore followers of God as dear children Do I need to say something on the word or are we going to say something about the word? <laughs> or do we just going to receive the word? In 2 Corinthians 2, Paul says this awesome thing. He says, we are not ignorant. Of now he calls a man by his real name, Satan. Satan devices okay big chief okay then he tells us exactly what Satan's devices is he says if you forgive one another I will also forgive them but if you do not forgive people anything they do we are not ignorant with Satan's devices that's why the minute I keep something, no matter how small, how big, what did I do? I gave place to the devil. So we are not ignorant of his devices. What must I do at all times? Okay, 
back to our favorite Mark 11, 22 through 25. Whosoever say unto this mountain, and doubt not in his heart, but that believe that what he saith will come to pass, shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, so that your Father which is in heaven may also forgive you. You see, we always stop just before that verse. We stop at the verse, what you say is, you know, speak to the mountain. But the next verse say, when you stand, forgive. In other words, this is a major thing not to give place to the devil because we are not ignorant of his devices. Because the minute I harbor something, what will I do? Somewhere or another, there will be a corrupt or an evil communication come out of my mouth. How do I know it? I will not be able to contain unforgiveness. Some or other time I will say something about that person. He says, then be followers of God as dear children. Uh, but he first says, forgive as God forgave. How did God forgive? Hebrews 8 verse 12 and 13, Hebrews 10 verse 17 through 21 says, their sin and their iniquity. I will remember no shout it out I will remember no more my mind have no remembrance my conscience my heart have no remembrance of nobody's sin I don't want to think sin I mean, imagine you must all the time say, oh, that sucker, you know, he took my car and stuff. That sucker, he stole my pencil. That wicked dude. I mean, if I see him on the playground, I'm going to curl his hair, even if it's straight. And if it's curled, I'm going to make them straight. I don't care what they are. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, the curlies are going to be straight and the straight's going to be curled. We're going to have a ramble on the rock. We're going to do something out there. No! What will happen if I really, really stand up here and say, as God forgave, I now forgive. I'm going to now follow God. I'm going to have no evil communications, no corrupt communication. I'm not going to give place to the devil. And I'm not going to be unknown with the evil devices of Satan. I set myself free. Let's turn around to Colossians. Verse 8 says, but now... You also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, same words, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image. Philippians, previous chapter, Philippians 3. Verse 20. Now remember, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been raised to be seated with Him. Verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. We will look for Christ, who shall change our vile body. Remember Romans 8, 11, If the same Spirit, the rays of Christ, may dwell in us, quicken our body. Like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now that word conversation, if we go to the Amplified, it says, but we are citizens of the state, the commonwealth, the homeland, which is in heaven. I looked this word up in the Strong's Concordance, how it was written 2,000 years ago. He says, Just the word conversation means, let your behavior be as a citizen of heaven. And for a minute, I was just caught up there. You know, that caught up thing that I get so easy. And I just saw angels round the throne, worshiping, falling down, sending out, bringing good messages to people, encouraging people, uh, uh, avoiding accidents, 
taking people off, bumping people out of the way of getting hurt, you know, protecting little children on the playground. And I heard somebody says to his wife, Hello, angel. So oh, everybody missed it. And I, and I heard somebody else say to somebody, You're an angel. And I heard somebody saying to me, Hey, my husband's a real angel. And then it stopped. Then I heard people say, Hey, you're a star, man. Hey, you're a star. You're a real star. Now, that is very scriptural. Because the seed of Abram, the spiritual seed, are stars of heaven. So if we are the stars of heaven, and we are acting to like citizens of heaven, we are a star. Star actually means you bright and doing something awesome. So we can't look to Hollywood to find out what a star looks like. Those are all dark stars. <laughs> Let's get Psalm 50, verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. To him that ordereth his conversation right, I will show the salvation of God. To he... To him who orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. The word salvation there means healing, wholeness, protection, preservation. It's such a wide word. To him who orders his conversation aright, no evil communication, no corrupt communication, no place to the devil. We know Satan's devices. We live a life free of sin and unrighteousness, and we live a life of forgiveness. What a life. <laughs> First Thessalonians 2. Verse 11. As you know how we exhorted and comforted, and charged every one of you as the Father does his children. That you would walk worthy of God. This is all our teachings. Who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God. Which you heard. Now remember faith comes by hearing the word. You received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God. Come on, 1 Peter 4 verse 10. If any man speaks, let it be words of God. So Paul says, when we spoke it was the word of God, you received it as the word of God. Listen to this one. Which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The word works effectually in you. Who's you? The believers. So I got to believe the word that's the word that's going out today. I must believe that if I walk out here, no more evil communication. No corrupt communications. Forgiveness to everybody. I must believe the word. Then it's going to work effectually in my life. Somebody needs to get excited. It will work. People, the word cannot fail. Unbelief can fail. Where is your faith? God is infallible. The Holy Spirit is infallible. Faith is infallible. Believing is infallible. God's stuff cannot fail. It's if I diverse from the things of God, divert from it. If I start saying wrong stuff, I give place to the devil. And we need to serve notice on the devil. Say, devil, get out. The word of God is in my heart and my mouth. Thus saith the Lord. Devil, get out. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Now remember the righteousness of faith. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amplified says it's rough. It has lots of power available. 
much power available. So if I can have a word that working effectively me, if I pray effectively, if I don't say evil and corrupt stuff, if I speak the righteousness which is of faith, if I forgive everybody and I stand in front of my mountain, what will hinder that mountain? To get out of the way and go. What will hinder the mountain to move? I think I've touched on all the points that could have hindered the mountain to move. The word, effectively, in us. Hey, that verse 16 in James chapter 5 where it says, The effectual fervent prayer for righteous man availeth much. The next verse was my very first verse in my life that I got that I could quote it and seek God healed. And Don sitting there was with me. You were with there in Rob Ferreira. Yeah, you were with. I got the photos. Don was with me. And that was the first verse I have. Elijah was a man subject to passions like us. 1974. Or 75, I don't know. And he prayed. And for three years and six months it didn't rain. And he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. You know? And I said, Elijah. Why can I pray like Elijah? Because Second Peter chapter 1, 21 says, Holy men of old spoke, moved upon by the Holy Spirit. And that word is not for personal interpretation. It means it's the word of God for anybody who wants to take it. So if Elijah could pray a certain way, then I can pray a certain way. If he could say to the Baal priest, Hey, Zep, gone with you. If he could say to Ahab, Hear the sound of abundance of rain. If he could say that stuff, it can happen. Philemon. Verse 5. Hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. I pray that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. 